I'm here at Pony Pasture to do a little plein air painting. I want to share my setup with you before I get started. First, I have a nice pillow to sit on. I found a really nice flat surface to work on. I have a travel set of brushes, as well as a flat, two flats and my favorite dragon's tooth, number 10. I have six tubes of paint, two each of the three primary colors, a warm and a cool of each one. I have a couple watercolor pencils just in case I want to throw in some sharp details, a regular drawing pencil and a sharpener, two little containers of water, and I use the lids for mixing also, and I have my palette right here. I have a roll of paper towels, some water to stay hydrated, and I have my drawing ready to go on Arches, 140 pound cold press paper. So I have a nice simple drawing all mapped out. I put a little bit of graphite down in some of the areas because I know I'm gonna wanna do gray. So I just pop that in a little bit before I started. I'm gonna start with the sky and I'm going to lay down some water right here. It's got a little bit of blue in, in my brush. That's okay. I'm going to lay some indanthrone down here along this, along the top of the tree line. And that's going to just make it nice and interesting contrast for the bottom of the clouds. And up here at the top, I'm going to lay down some cerulean. First, I'm going to get that brush clean. It wasn't very clean. I'll lay some cerulean up here. So I have two different kinds of blues already. There we go. And now I'm going to take my paper towel and dab this a little bit and get a nice little cloud line going on. And I don't want it to look perfectly straight. And I want to remember too that watercolor dries like 10% lighter. So I can, I can let it be a little darker than I think it needs to be. And so there I'm gonna leave it just like that. While my sky is drying, I'm gonna come in and work on the rocks that are out in the distance. And I've mixed up two browns. One is very golden and then, and and very warm and then one is a little bit cooler and I'm just going to go through with each of these rocks the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a little bit of water where I want it to be lighter and I'm going to come in with a little dab of paint and go along the top and then a little dab of paint along the bottom and just let that let that blend and give it form and then I'm going to come back, I'm just going to let it bleed too. Then I'm going to come back with that cool and just pop along the bottom. And that should give me these nice rounded forms that are weighted. I have all my rocks in the distance laid down and now I'm going to work on the rocks in the foreground. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently because the, the rocks in the background, they have, they have um, several values and it's nice and smooth. And the rocks in the foreground, they're closer so I can see more detail. So I want to put lots of value, lots of texture in them. 
and I'm going to use a little bit of a cooler color to start off with. And I'm going to go for all the darks in these rocks first, and I'm going to use the side of my brush, and I'm, I'm going to let the brush get some texture in there right away for me. And I'm going to just start with, with looking where those dark darks are and just kind of dragging my brush along the side and filling, filling this in to start off with. And then I'm going to come back in with the water and the warmer brown and smooth this all out. Rocks are really circles, squares, or a combination, circles, squares, rectangles. And so you just want to build form in the same way that you would with those objects. So I have my rocks looking in the foreground the way that I want them to look. I want them to have sharp edges, so I'm not going to do them all at once. I'm going to let that dry. And I've started to work on my tree line along here. The thing that I want to achieve with this is what I'm looking at in nature is that the trees way off in the distance are here and then every every layer of tree is overlapping the other. So I want to get that overlapping look. So I'm going to do that with, with size. So it's really small right here. It's really big right here. And I want to do it with color. I want to have it kind of faded back here and more neutral colors. And then I want more brighter, vivid colors as I move forward and then also increase the amount of texture. So because I want that overlapping look, some of these edges I want them to be sharp so I'm not going to do that whole length of horizon line in one fell sweep because then it'll blend together too much so I'm just going to work on little sections and so maybe I'll show you just this section over here what I'm going to do is get some of my my little olive color down here And what I'm doing right now is I'm painting some of these negative shapes that the trees might be creating. Put some of my olive in there, I'm not worrying too much about what it is I'm making. And I'm gonna lay some I'm gonna lay some water up here because I want some highlights still. I'm gonna come in with this blue green right there and then I'm coming in with this brighter yellow green. Well, it's not as yellow as I thought it was. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of dab and let these shapes emerge on their own. I'm going to keep on playing, playing around like this and see, see what the paint wants to do too. So I've come back in here with some cool grays and then I'm starting to build up a lot more form with these rocks right here. I laid in a little bit of greenery right here. I kept it on the yellow side so that if I, when I do my water, if I go back on top of it, it'll, it'll still be nice and green. So it's on the yellow side, the blue over the green will just make it greener. So I'm still working on my, my tree line back there, but I'm going to start coming in here and playing with this water a little bit. I'm just going to come in with some cerulean and lay down some little tiny washes and just kind of play with that water like this. I'm going to keep it nice and fluid and start where it's the darkest, but start with the light color. And I'm just going to keep playing like that with my with my water. I have a nice layer of cerulean kind of washed in right here and now I'm going to start coming back in and I'm going to go with something a little bit a little bit darker and I'm going to come in underneath these rocks where the water is more in shadows. 
And I'm also going to start coming in along this shoreline where the light's not hitting the water so much. And then that's going to start giving this a little bit more depth. And I'm, I'm just going to keep playing with this so it the color starts building up and building up. So I've come in and finished up the water, popped up the tree line and come back in with grays and really smoothed out these locks a lot. I lost some of my texture but not too much of it. I have a tendency to really like coming in smooth so you can't go against your own nature so you just have to um, accept the way that you are when you paint. And one of the things I want to point out when you're doing a landscape it's really complicated. You cannot possibly put everything that you see in nature into your painting and there's no reason why you need to because we have cameras. But if you break it down and think of it in these simple terms of breaking up the spaces on your um, paper into shapes and each shape is a different plane that you're seeing that in nature. So the sky is one shape and that's really a dome. The tree line is another shape and it's coming toward the, the water is another shape and it's a plane also coming toward me. The rocks are, is another plane and then the ground is another plane. And if you assign a different color value tone to each one of these to set them apart, you can really orchestrate an interesting picture. So I'm getting pretty much close to finished. I can still go back in and I can touch up a lot of this stuff, but all I'm going to do right now is just kind of lay down a little bit of a, of a wash to kind of finish this off. I don't want it to be too dark because then my rocks are going to disappear. And my rocks are really the focal point in this picture. And your center of interest is going to be where there's the highest contrast between dark and light. And so my highest contrast is, is really right here. Um, I have intense blue right here and then the gray. So I don't want to darken this too much, but I'll just put a, a little bit of dark right underneath them to kind of balance them. And then I, I could go back into the studio and touch this up a little bit more if I want to. Or I could just leave it as, as it is and be happy.